Welcome to Lecture Online and here's our first example of how we deal with heat in calorimetry. A simple example, it says what is the heat required to raise the temperature of 25 milliliters of water from 20 degrees centigrade to 85 degrees centigrade. So here we have a cup that contains 25 liter, liters of uh, milliliters, not liters, but milliliters of water. Starting at initial temperature of 20 degrees centigrade, we're going to add heat to it. So we're going to expect the temperature to go up. And the question is, how much heat do we have to add so that the temperature will go from 20 degrees centigrade to 85 degrees centigrade? All right, when we do that, we have to first make the assumption that the cup itself will not absorb energy. So let's say it's made out of plastic or made out of some material that doesn't absorb heat very well and it takes a while for the temperature to soak into that material. So we're only going to worry about the water itself. So now we need an equation. The equation we're going to use is that the change uh, or the heat absorbed or given off is equal to mc delta t. And that's what we're looking for, the change in the heat, right? So we know that's going to be positive, and the temperature is therefore going to go up. Now we can rewrite this equation as a delta Q is equal to mc times the T final minus T initial. So that's what we call the change in the temperature. So now we need the mass, the specific heat, and the final and initial temperatures. Now the final initial temperatures we have, initial temperature 20, final temperature 85 degrees centigrade. What about the mass? Well, we weren't given the mass, but we're given the number of milliliters of water, and it turns out that we know that the mass of one milliliter of water happens to be equal to one gram, and because that's by definition, by design, we called the mass of one milliliter of water equal to one gram. So that means if we have 25 milliliters of water, we will have 25 grams of water. So now we're ready to plug in the numbers. So this is equal to 25 grams times the specific heat of water. Now we can do it in calories or we can do it in joules. Calories is, a, is an older unit that we tend to use. Newer books tend to use joules much more. So I'll do it both ways. So one calorie per gram per centigrade degree. And then the change in the temperature, T final, which would be 85 degrees centigrade minus 20 degrees centigrade. So this is equal to 25 grams times one calorie per gram per centigrade degree. And as you may say, well, why is he writing that again? Well, I wanted to show you that when you do the difference between two temperatures, 85 minus 20 is 65, so this is 65 centigrade degrees. That's the difference between two temperatures, so don't write degrees centigrade. That's a more proper way of writing it. Now, grabbing my calculator, I can go 25, times 65 is 1625, so this will require 1625 calories. Now, what if we had done this in joules instead of calories? Not a problem. The only thing that would have then changed is instead of calories, I would have then replaced it with 4.186 joules instead of how many calories per gram per centigrade degree. So this would have been 4.186 joules. And this would have been this number times, of course, 4.186 joules per calorie. It would have been this conversion factor. So we take that number times 4.186 equals and then we would have had a result of 6,802 um, joules instead of calories, which of course would be 6.8 kilojoules. So sometimes instead of joules, we write kilojoules. So there's a nice easy example where you can see how we can calculate the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a substance, a certain amount of substance, by a certain number of degrees. So fairly straightforward. And that's how you do that.